Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's nine days to go to your GCSE Maths exam, so if you've got hard work, you're doing really, really well. And rather than focus on one topic today, what I thought I'd do is focus on wordy questions. A lot of students, particularly in the foundation tier, and actually a higher tier too, find wordy questions quite tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through wordy questions, and I'm going to give you a selection of questions to try today, a range of questions to try today. So I'll be getting you to pause and try the questions, but then I'll also be talking about how to approach those questions and some strategies that might be quite useful whenever you see those wordy questions in the exam. And not to be hopefully daunted by them, but to actually think about it in terms of how you can approach them and get the marks in those questions. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at wordy questions, so questions that involve lots of words. And in this video, I've got a collection of six questions for you to look at. In terms of the questions that I've selected, I've selected questions across a range of topics, such as area, units, ratios, percentages. And I've selected these questions because they've got a lot of information for you to read through. And I would often find as a teacher that these are the questions where students would say, oh, we could do a bit more practice on these wordy questions. So in terms of wordy questions, there's three bits of advice that I would give. One is make sure you read the question carefully. So read it through twice before you begin. The second bit of advice I'd give is think about what maths may be involved in the question. So for instance, in this question, we've got units, we've got tons, we've got kilograms. And you know, so in this question, there's units involved. So, uh, there may be a question where there's area involved. Think of what maths may be involved in the question. And then the last thing I would say is make sure you're answering the question. So whenever you're doing a question, make sure you're, being, you're answering what you're being asked for. So in this question, it says, can Florence safely transport the washing machines, ovens and microwaves? And we're able to answer yes or no. So make sure you're answering what you're being asked for. So my three bits of advice whenever you're dealing with wordy questions are make sure you read the question carefully, consider what maths you've been asked for in the question, and make sure you're answering the question. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. And normally I would say press pause and try it yourself, but I'm actually going to read the question as well. So the question says, a lorry can safely transport two tons of goods. Florence is loading the lorry with washing machines, ovens, and microwaves. Florence wants to load the lorry with eight washing machines, each weighing 85 kilograms. 12 ovens each weigh 75 kilograms and 22 microwaves each weigh 20 kilograms and the question says can Florence safely transport eight washing machines 12 ovens and 22 microwaves and the question then says you must show how you get your answer so we need to show working in this question and just before we have a go at this question the thing I should say to you is this is a calculator question so you may use calculator in this question so feel free to press pause and try this question now Okay, so in terms of this question, I've actually just read it through again just to make sure I really understand it. So I've read the question twice. And in terms of this question, I want to consider what maths may be involved. So here we're dealing with tons and kilograms, and there may be some units involved in this question. So in terms of this question, we've been asked, can Florence safely transport the washing machines, the ovens, and the microwaves? So let's find out how much they weigh altogether, the eight washing machines, the 12 ovens, and the 22 microwaves. If we see how much they weigh altogether, we can then figure out, can the lorry safely transport them? Because the lorry can safely transport two tons and then we'll be able to answer the question yes or no whether Florence can safely transport them. So in terms of the lorry it can safely transport two tons. So in terms of two tons a ton is a thousand kilograms so two tons is two thousand kilograms so two thousand kilograms that's how much the lorry can safely transport. Now she transports eight washing machines each weighing 85 kilograms. So to find how much they weigh altogether, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 85 kilograms, how much one washing machine weighs, and I'm going to multiply by eight to see the total weight of those eight washing machines. So on my calculator, I'm going to do eight times 85. And that's equal to 680 kilograms. So those eight washing machines weigh 680 kilograms. Now, in terms of the 12 ovens, they each weigh 75 kilograms, and there's 12 of them. So if we take the 75 kilograms and we multiply by 12, that'll tell us the total weight of the 12 ovens. So 75 multiplied by 12 is equal to 900. That's 900 kilograms. And then finally, the microwaves, there's 22 of those, and they each weigh 20 kilograms. So if we take the 20 kilograms and we multiply that by 22, we can see how much they weigh in total. So 20 multiplied by 22 is equal to 440 kilograms, 440 kilograms. So in terms of the washing machines, we now know how much they weigh. In the ovens, we know how much they weigh. And the microwaves, we know how much they weigh in total. So if we add those up, we can find out the total weight of all the items that Florence wants to put in the lorry. So let's add those up. Let's do our 680 plus 900 plus 440 and see how much they weigh in total. And this is a calculator question, so you can work this out in your calculator. And you get that's equal to 2,020 kilograms. So we've now found the total weight of the washing machines, the ovens, and the microwaves. Now, they weigh 2,020 kilograms, but the lorry can only safely transport 2 tons or 2,000 kilograms of goods. So can Florence transport them? No, she can't, because they weigh more than what the lorry can safely transport. So the question says, can she safely transport them? The answer is no, she cannot. And the answer is no, she cannot. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. 
Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Orla's planning a trip for her friends and here are the costs for the trip. And we've got the entry fee, which is £17 per person, the transport, which costs £320 in total, insurance, which costs £90 in total, and other costs, which costs £80 in total. And Orla charges £21 per person for the trip and 100 people go on the trip. And the question says, has Orla collected enough money to pay for all of the costs of the trip? And the question says, you must show you're working. Okay, so in terms of this question, it's a non calculator question. Feel free now to press pause and try this question now yourself. Okay, so just before we begin this question, I've actually read it again just to make sure I understand all the information we've been given and what we've been asked for. Okay, so in terms of this question, what is organizing a trip and here are the costs for the trip. So these are her costs. And then we're told that she charges each person £21 for the trip and 100 people go on the trip. And we're trying to find out whether she's collected enough money or not. So in other words, is this enough money to pay for the trip? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out how much money she receives to begin with. She charges the 100 people £21 each. So let's take the £21 and multiply that by 100. So 21 times 100, moving these digits two columns to the left or adding on two zeros, would be 2,100. So that means the order receives £2,100. And I'm actually just going to write that down. That's how much she receives. So just written down beside that, order has paid this amount. Just because of quite often with these questions, there's a lot of maths involved. And sometimes you may lose track of the numbers. So it's okay to actually sometimes just annotate beside your work working out what it is. Um, you can write it in sort of shorthand, like order receives this or the amount paid or something like that, just so you understand what it is. So that's how much she receives from the people going on the trip. Now let's work out how much the trip costs. So the entry fee is £17 per person and there's 100 people going on the trip. So we're going to need to take the £17 and we're going to need to multiply that by 100. So let's take the £17 and multiply that by 100. And 17 times 100 is equal to £1,700. So that's £1,700. So that's the entrance fee for everybody. But then there's these other costs as well. There's the transport, the insurance, and the costs, other costs. So we've got to add those on. So we need to add those all up to work out how much the trip costs in total. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 8 is equal to 19. So let's put a 9 down and carry a 1. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Put a 1 down and carry a 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So that's how much the trip costs, the trip total cost of the trip. So we've now worked out the total cost of the trip, which is £2,190, and how much money she receives, which is £2,100. And as you can see, the money she receives, or the money she's paid by the people going on the trip, isn't enough. She needs an extra £90. So the question says, has Orla collected enough money to pay for all of these costs? The answer is no. So let's write that down. And that's it. I've written no, she's £90 short. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so this is our next question, and we're told Edward and his four friends go on holiday. The total cost of the holiday is £3,600. Edward is going to stay longer than his friends, so he decides he's going to pay 35% of the total cost, and the rest of the cost is shared equally between his four friends. And Edward says, I pay twice as much money for the holiday as each of my friends. And the question says, is Edward correct? Explain your answer. And just before you press pause and try this question out yourself, it is a calculator question, so you can use a calculator in this question. And feel free to press pause and now to try this question yourself. Okay, so in terms of this question, I've read it again, just to make sure I understand the information. So he's going on holiday, this, this is the total cost. He's going to pay 35% off this total cost because he's staying a bit longer. And then the rest of that amount, the rest of the amount is then shared equally between his four friends. Uh, so that's the information we're told in the question. He then says he pays twice as much money for the holiday as each of his friends. And then we've been asked, is he correct? So we've been asked, is he correct? So we're going to have to answer yes or no. And this time we've also got to explain our answer. So it's important this time we explain our answer. Okay, so in terms of this question, what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to find out how much money Edward pays for his trip because the total cost of the trip is £3,600 and he pays 35% of that. So let's find 35% of 3600 So let's do that. So in terms of Edward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the £3,600, so £3,600, and I'm going to divide it by 100 to find 1% to begin with. So if we take our 3600 and we divide it by 100, that'll tell us 1%, and that's equal to £36. Now we want to find 35%. So we found 1% by dividing by 100. We now need to multiply by 35. So let's take our 36 and multiply that by 35. And that'll tell us how much money Edward paid for the trip. So 36 pound multiplied by 35 is equal to 1,260 pound. So that's how much he paid in total for the trip. So that's how much Edward paid for the trip. Now the question then said the rest of the total cost. 
So he's paid that amount. So let's take that away from the 3,600 to see what's left. So let's take it 3,600 and take away 1,260 and see what we get. So whenever we do 3,600, take away that answer, we get that's equal to 2,340 pound. So that's the rest of the money, how much is left to pay. And that's shared equally between his four friends. Because it's shared equally, we're gonna divide it by four. So we're gonna take that 2,340 pound and we're gonna divide that by four. That'll tell us how much each one of his friends so if we divide that by four, we get that's equal to 585 pound. So that's how much each of his friends pay, pays. And let's write that down. And just beside that, I've written down that's the amount each friend pays, just to remind myself what that amount is. Okay, so we've worked out how much Edward pays, and we've worked out how much each of his friends pays. Now, if we carry on with the question, Edward says, I pay twice as much for the holiday as each of my friends. So he's saying that he's paying double what his friends pay, because he's saying he pays twice as much. So let's see, does he pay twice as much? And we can do this in two different ways. We could take his amount of money and half it, and see what half of his amount of money is. Or we can take how much each of his friends pays, which is the £585, and multiply that by two, and see if his amount is double that or not. So there's two different approaches, and quite often with these wordy questions, there may be more than one approach in terms of how you tackle it. So I'm gonna take the £585, how much each of his friends pays, and I'm gonna multiply that by two to see, does he pay twice as much? So if we take the £585 and multiply that by two, we get that's equal to £1,170. So if Edwards was to pay twice as much, he would pay £1,170. Well, as you can see, Edward actually pays more than that. So Edward's paying more than twice the amount that his friends pay. So if we go back to the question, the question says, is Edward correct? Well, the answer is no, he actually pays more than twice the amount. So let's write that down. And that's it. So the question is, is Edward correct? No, Edward pays more than twice the amount that each of his friends pays. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, a farmer owns two identical fields. So a farmer owns two identical fields and each field is a trapezium. So this field's a trapezium and this field's a trapezium. The farmer's going to plant a crop. Each eight kilogram bag of seed costs 19.99. 60 gram of seed covers an area of one meter squared. And the farmer's got 1,100 pound to spend on seed. Has the farmer got enough money to buy all the seed he needs to cover both fields? So there's a lot of information in this question. Uh, before we do this question, actually, I just want to say that I picked this question on purpose because it involves area. And I just want to show you that wordy questions can also be involved in situations that perhaps involve area, volume, things like that. So I've chosen this question on purpose. And also, it's a calculator question. I wanted to mention that as well. So we've read through the question. Feel free now to press pause and to try this question now yourself. So the farmer owns these two fields and he's going to plant a crop in these fields. Each eight kilogram bag of seed costs 19.99. 60 gram of seeds covers an area of a meter squared and he's got 1,100 pounds to spend on the seed and we want to know, is that enough? So in this question, we want to find out, does he have enough money to buy the seed to cover these fields? And we know it takes 60 grams of seed to cover an area of one meter squared. So we're going to need to find the area of the fields to begin with. If we find the area for the fields, we can then find out how much seed he needs. We can then find out how many bags of seed he'll need to buy. And then we can work out how much that'll cost him. So there's lots of different things we need to do in this question. So we need to find the area of the fields. Then we need to work out how much seed he needs, how many bags he'll need, the total cost of that. And then also to say whether he'll have enough money or not. So I'm going to start off by finding the area of this trapezium A to begin with. And then with trapezium B, it'll have the same area as trapezium A because we're told that the two fields are identical. So let's start off with the area of trapezium A. So the area of field A, area of A. Well, this is a trapezium, and the area for trapezium is found by a half bracket A plus B times H. And that's the length of the two parallel sides added together. So in this case, that'll be 80 plus 120 half and then multiply by h that's the distance between them now the distance from here to here is 70 meters so half of it this distance would be equal to 35 meters so that means our h the distance between the two parallel sides is 35 meters so if we wanted to find the area of this trapezium a what we would do is we would do a half and then in brackets the two parallel sides added together so it's going to be 80 plus 120 close brackets, multiplied by h, which is the distance between them, which is 35. Now this is a calculator question, so you can just type this into your calculator, and when you do that, you get an answer of 3,500. That actually makes sense, because if we do 80 plus 120, that's 200. 
half of that is 100, and times 35 is 3,500. So we found the area of field A, and then field B has the same area, actually. So let's write that down. So the area of field B is also equal to 3,500. So the total area and will be equal to 7,000 meters squared, because 3,500 plus 3,500 will be equal to 7,000 meters squared, or 7,000 square meters. So we found the total area of the two fields, which is 7,000 square meters. Now we're told 60 grams of seed covers an area of one square meter. So in other words, every time we've got a square meter, 60 grams of seed will cover it. Now we've got not one square meter, we've got 7,000 square meters. So that means the farmer would need 7,000 lots of 60 grams to cover each one of those square meters. So let's write that down. 60 grams multiplied by 7,000 would be equal to 420,000 grams. So the farmer needs 420,000 grams of seed. Okay, so we now know the farmer needs 420,000 grams of seed. Now actually, because in this question he's gonna be buying the seed in kilogram bags, let's convert this into kilograms. So if we take the 420,000, and we divide that by a thousand because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram, that's equal to 420. So the farmer needs 420 kilograms of seed to cover both of these fields, A and B. Now we're told this information here. Now this slide is quite important because actually we're told two different things. We're told that each eight kilogram bag costs 19.99. Now that line actually tells us two bits of information. It tells us that each bag costs 19.99, but also tells us that it's sold in eight kilogram bags. So we need to see how many eight kilogram bags the farmer needs to buy. Now altogether he needs to buy 420 kilograms. So if we take the 420 and we divide that by 8, that'll tell us how many bags he needs. So 420 divided by 8 is equal to 52.5. So the farmer will need 52.5 bags exactly. However, he's not going to be able to buy that. He's going to have to buy 53 bags. So he's going to need 53 bags of seed. 53 bags of of seed. So that's how much seed he would need to buy if he wants to cover both fields. If he buys 52, that's not enough. So he has to buy 53. And it doesn't mention that he can buy any smaller bags. So that's how much he'll have to buy. And each bag costs 19.99. So let's multiply our 19.99, 19.99, multiply by 53 to find the total cost of the seed. So 19.99 multiplied by 53 is equal to 1,059 pound and 47 P. So that's how much money it costs the farmer for the seed. Okay, the farmer has 1,100 pound to spend on seed. So he actually has enough money. The, the question says, has the farmer got enough money? So the answer is yes, he does, because he, it's only gonna cost him 1,059 pound and 47 P, but he's got 1,100 pound, so let's explain that. And that's it, it's just written, yes, he's got 1,100 pound, which is more than the 1,059 pound and 47 P needed, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question, it says, an adult ticket for a museum costs £16, and a child ticket costs 70% of the price of an adult ticket, and Mrs. Jenkins and her three children go to the museum. So there's Mrs. Jenkins and her three children. Mrs. Jenkins got a voucher that reduces the total entry cost by 10%, and she pays with three £20 notes. And the question says, how much change will Mrs. Jenkins receive? So feel free to press pause and try this question out. And just before we begin, actually, it's a non-calculator question, so you've got to do this question without a calculator. Okay, so just before we begin, I've read through this question again, just to make sure I fully understand it. So there's Mrs. Jenkins and her three children are going to the museum. They're gonna buy some tickets, but the children tickets are a bit cheaper than the adult tickets, so we're gonna to need to work out the cost of the child ticket. Also, Mrs. Jenkins got a voucher that's gonna save her 10%. And then she pays with these three 20 pound notes and we've been asked to work out how much change she receives. So in this question, there's a lot of information and it's also particularly important in this question is we know what we've been asked for. We've been asked how much change will she receive. So we're not being asked how she got enough money. We're not being asked for the total amount she's got to pay. It's how much change she's going to receive. Okay, so let's start off by finding the price of a child ticket because we know that a child ticket costs 70% of the price of an adult ticket. So if we work at 70% of 16 pound, that's the price of a child ticket. So let's find that. Now in terms of finding this 70%, there's lots of different ways we could do it. We could, now remember it's a non-calculator question. So one approach could be to divide this by 100 to get 1% and then times by 70. It's a non-calculator approach, so I'll probably not use that approach. Another approach is to get 10%, so we could divide this by 10 to get 1.60, and then times that by seven to get 70%, because seven lots of 10% would be 70%. So you could do 160 times seven, and you get, that's quite straightforward using column multiplication. So you could use that approach. Or another approach would be to find 50%, 10%, and 10%, and add them together to get 70%. And that's actually what I'm going to do. So 50%, so 50% of 16 pound would be equal to 8 pound, just half in it. 10% of 16 pound 
would be equal to dividing this by 10 would be 1.60 and another 10 percent would be equal to 1.60 so we've got 50 percent 10 percent and 10 percent if we add them together that'll be 70 percent so let's add them together 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 6 plus 6 is 12, so put the 2 down, carry a 1. And 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So it means each child ticket is £11.20. So we've got the price of an adult ticket, which is £16, and we now know the price of a child ticket, which is £11.20. So it's the price of a child ticket. Now we're told that Mrs Jenkins and her three children, so there's her and her three children, so there's an adult and three children. So let's work out the price of those tickets. That's £16 for her. It's £11.20 for one child, £11.20 for another child, and £11.20 for the third child. Now you could have taken the £11.20 and multiplied it by three to get £33.60, and then added that on. I'm just gonna put them in a list and add them up. So zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus two plus two plus two is six. Six plus one plus one plus one is nine. And one plus one plus one plus one is equal to four. So that means that without using a voucher, the total price would normally be 49.60 so that's the normal price that's the normal price now mrs jenkins has got a voucher that reduces the total price by 10 percent so if she went into the museum and she was going to buy her ticket she'd go into the museum she'd say can i have an adult ticket and free child tickets please the person would then say oh that's 49 pound 60 and then mrs jenkins would say hold on a second i've got a voucher for 10 percent she'd hand over the voucher the person would then scan that in the till and then it would reduce the price we're going to do it ourselves so we're going to reduce this by 10 percent what if the till is broken we might need to be able to work this out so let's find out what 10% of this is. So 10% of £49.60. So to find out 10% of £49.60, we just need to divide by 10. And that'll move all the digits one column to the right. So that would be equal to £4.96. So that saves her £4.96. That's what 10% is. So that saves her £4.96. Now we need to reduce it from the total price because the voucher reduces the total price by 10%. So we're going to take the £4.96 away from the normal price of £49.60. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got £49.60 take away £4.96. Zero take away six, let's borrow. It's now five and a ten. Ten take away six is equal to four. Five take away nine, we're going to need to borrow again. Fifteen take away nine is equal to six. 8 take away 4 is equal to 4, and 4 take away 0 is equal to 4. So that means it will cost her £44.64p. So that's the price paid. That's how much Mrs Jenkins paid for herself and the three children to go into the museum. But we're now told more information than this wordy question. We're told that she pays with three £20 notes. Well, 3 multiplied by £20 is equal to £60. So she pays £60, and we're asked how much change will she receive. So we need to take this £44.64 away from £60 to work out how much change Mrs Jenkins will receive. So let's do that. So we've got £60 take away £44.64p. So let's do that. We're going to need to borrow. So zero take away four. We're going to need to borrow. Oh, we have to borrow from the six. That's a five and a ten, a nine and a ten, a nine and a ten. Ten take away four is equal to six. Nine take away six is equal to three. Nine take away four is equal to five, and five take away four is equal to one. So that means that she will receive fifteen pound and thirty six p in change. And that's it. So that was that question. And I quite enjoyed that one, actually. There's a lot of things to do, but I thought it was quite straightforward. And it's actually something that, you know, in terms of going to a museum, is something that could happen. And I think it's quite a nice question. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So the last question says, some people went to a football match, so some people at a football match, and the ratio of the number of children to the number of adults is two to nine. So for every two children, there's nine adults at the football match. Each person either stood in the terraces or had a seat in the stand. So they either stood in the terraces or sat in the stand. Two-fifths of the children stood in the terraces. So out of all the children, two-fifths of them stood in the terraces. And 24 children sat in the stand. And then the question says there's exactly 250 seats in the stand. And it says, were there people on more than 85% of the seats? Okay, so we've read through the question once. I would probably recommend reading it again. I'm actually going to read it again now myself, just to make sure I fully understand what's going on. Uh, it's a calculator question, so feel free to use a calculator in this question. And press pause now and try this question. 
Okay, so we've read through the question over two times, just to make sure I really understand this question. And unlike the last question, the one with the tickets, where I really knew from the beginning exactly what approach I was going to use. With this question, I'm, there's a lot of information, and at this point, from reading through two or three times, I'm not entirely sure exactly, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. What I'm actually going to do with this question is actually just think, where can I start? And in terms of this question, I think I'm going to focus on this part here, these two lines here, this line and this line. Because we're told there's 24 children sat in the stand, and that two-fifths of the children stood in the terraces. Okay, so if we let this bar represent the total number of children, we know that two-fifths of them stood in the terraces. So let's split this into fifths. So, okay, so it divided the children into fifths, and we know that two-fifths of them stood in the terraces. So I'm going to put a T for terraces and T for terraces. That means that the rest of them must have had a seat in the stand. So that's the stand, the stand, the stand. So we know there's 24 children that sat in the stand. So we know that altogether here there's 24 children. There's 24 children that sat in the stand. Now, in terms of that means that we can work out how many children were in the terraces. Because if there's 24 children that sat in the stand, then we can work out how many children were standing in the terraces. Because if we look here, that means that this is 8, 8, and 8. They can are 24 and divide it by 3. And that must mean that that's an 8 and that's an 8. So that means there's 16 children in the terraces and there's 24 children sat in the stand. So that means altogether, if we do 16 plus 24, altogether, 16 plus 24, that means there's 40 children. So there's 40 children at this match. And that's fantastic because we now know the total number of children. And if we know the total number of children, we can now work out then the total number of adults. So let's do that. So we've worked out there's 40 children altogether, and the ratio of children to adults is 2 to 9. So for every 2 children, there's 9 adults. So let's take the 40 and divide it by the child number of the ratio, which is 2. And that gives us 20. That means there's 20 in one part. And 20 multiplied by 9 is equal to 180. So that means there's 180 adults. So altogether, we know that there's 40 children and 180 adults. And if we simplify that ratio, that simplifies down to 2 to 9. And there's 40 children, and we know that two-fifths of them were in the terraces, so that means there's 16 children in the terraces, and that 24 children were sat in the sand. So we've got all that information so far. Okay, fantastic. So if we now carry on with our question, we're then told there's exactly 250 seats in the stand. So we've got this stand, I'm just doing a little sketch here. So we've got this stand, and there's 250 seats all together, so there's 250 seats. Now, we're told in the question that 24 children sat in the stand. So there's 24 children in this stand. There's 24 children sat in the stand. I'm not going to draw 24 little people, but there's 24 children in this stand. And we've been asked, were there people on more than 85% of the seats? Now, we're not actually told for any information in terms of the adults, in terms of how many were on the terraces or how many were sat in the stand and so on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out what 85% of the total number of seats are, and I'm going to work out how many seats that would be in total. So let's take the 250, which is the total number of seats in this stand, and let's divide it by 100 to find 1%, so that's equal to 2.5, and let's multiply it by 85. So let's take our 2.5 and multiply by 85, because that'll tell us 85%, and that's equal to 200. 12.5. So obviously there can't be exactly 85% of the seats taken because that'd be 212.5. But the question says, were there people on more than 85% of the seats? In other words, were there at least 213 people sat in this stand? Now, in the question, we know there's 180 adults. So if all 180 adults were sat in this stand, so if there was 180 adults sat in that stand, altogether, if we do 180, plus 24, that's equal to 204 people. That's the greatest number of people that could be sat in that stand. Now for there to be 85% of the seats taken, 212.5 seats would have to be taken. Now obviously there can't be 212.5 seats taken, it could be 213. But we know there's only 204 people sat in the stand. So were there people on more than 85% of the seats? No. So I've written, no, there were not. And that's our answer. And actually, just out of interest, if all 180 adults were sat in the stand, and we don't actually know that for sure, but if all 180 adults were sat in the stand, let's work out the maximum number of seats that could be taken. So the maximum number of seats can be taken would be 204. And let's work that out as a percentage. 204 out of 250. If we divide that, 204 divided by 250, that's equal to 0.816, and that would be 81.6%. So the maximum possible percentage of seats that could have been taken in this stand would have been 81.6%. So that's it. So the answer is no, there were not. And that's it. So in this video, I've gone through some wordy questions. Obviously, we've 
wordy questions. You don't know what questions they're going to make wordy and how they're going to word them and things like that. But hopefully you'll find some strategies in terms of question, you know, how to approach these questions and hopefully how to get full marks in them as well. And not to be daunted, but actually just break it down. And hopefully by breaking the question down, getting out the key information, hopefully you can figure out what topic it is and the best way to approach that question. So in this video, we're going through wordy questions. I really hope you find it useful. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock will be the next video. So see you then. Cheers. Bye.